All right, everybody, hit the subscribe button, the notification bell, and all videos. You see right there where it says all? Okay. So one more time, one more time, everybody. You hit the subscribe button, then that little bell, and then all videos. Don't leave it up to YouTube. Don't leave it up to YouTube. All right? Okay. Hello and welcome. This is Gray Hughes of Gray Hughes Investigates on YouTube. This channel evaluates all aspects of true crime. As you are aware, videos and live streams in this genre often discuss elements of crime that may be disturbing to some viewers. If necessary, take the precautions needed to avoid these feelings. Factual information related to cases is the key to fostering rational true crime discussions. Fortunately, you will find that here. Please hit the like button only once. Share the video and subscribe if you like my content. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs> hey, it's Cali Gal 3. Still don't have that video yet, Cali Gal 3. What's going on? What the hell's going on? I don't know what the dog's video is. Is that. Oh, they're there. Okay. Yeah. So, what's going on, everybody? All right, man. Uh, you know, some interesting information in the Riley strain case maybe it opens the door to that person that I kept saying that what was running away it was always interesting you never know you never know so hold on I'm trying to open up oh you like the new one <laughs> where, where I speak and go hey now listen I mean, I just do that live every time. No, thank you. Just wait for a few more people to get here. Hey, we're already at 404. Maybe we'll get to a bigger number here in a minute. Oh, hold on, I'm trying to open up uh, my Adobe Premiere that has a ton of stuff in it. <clears throat> Maybe we can take a look at that stuff again later. All right, so we're going to do the Caleb Harris case two after, I mean, I guess we'll do Riley's uh, strain, but if it gets like, you know, people are really into that, we'll push back. Yeah, but I, I, I'd rather, I mean, Kaylee, Caleb uh, Harris is just pretty interesting one. Some some guy that just basically just disappeared off the face of the earth for no reason at all. I mean, really strange one. It's, it's exactly the kind that people are interested in. And I've had it in a folder for like two weeks and figured figured I'd pull it out finally. Thanks, Mark Willis. Appreciate it. Hey, look at that. It's eight six seven five three zero nine. So about 105, is that the one? I'm just trying to go back in time and find some of my, I, didn't, I don't know where I put it. How about like 97, is that right? Oh yeah, I think this is good. Yeah. That should work. There we go. Maybe have that. You can't see what I'm looking at. 
Thank you for all the help getting back. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Hey, thanks, KM Christian. Okay, uh, well, this isn't relevant yet. But let's, let's go get back into the uh, Tennessee location right there. And then, so, you know the family spokesman for Riley Strain? He was in a, he was on News Nation today. So a per person like that has more credibility than, you know, for example, like somebody like JLR or somebody, you know, who just rambles on about, endlessly about something. Hey, thanks, Tumbleweed and Osiris Stewart. Thank you very much. So let's see. I'm going to read these notes to you and tell me what you guys think. So uh, so Chris Dingman, he's the Camley... Oh, uh, Camley, jeez. <laughs> Chris <laughs> Dingman Camley, jeez. How would I even say Camley? Have you guys ever said that before? I think my brain's starting to... I, might, I can't even read words. And, uh, it says, Chris Dingman uh, is a family friend. And originally, the first autopsy said, no obvious sign of trauma with a weapon, for example. You know, they couldn't see anything that was obvious. Coroner stated there was a lack. Uh, but then they did like a second autopsy. Or some, uh, some uh, I think it was, I can't remember how he worded it, but like it was leaked out that there was a lack of fluid in his lungs. And we, we all know, because we've covered this for a long time, that um, uh, the, you know, if you're alive when you go into the water, but you're unconscious, you'll breathe in, or, you know, even if you just drown, you breathe in liquid, you know, the water, right? So it's in your lungs, it's sitting in there. But if there's a lack of water in your lungs, that means you, um, you, know, you died before actually getting into the water, and therefore you're not breathing in any liquid. So when you hear that, it's kind of interesting. Uh, can you? Uh, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to. Uh, you you go ahead, uh, Susan. But we're not we're not. This isn't an advertising uh, fest for a lunatic. All right. Thank you. All right. So I brought him up because I think he's a. It's a service, other than when he goes around and just films stuff. But when he starts getting involved and trying to accuse family members and stuff, that's when you got to look at him like he's just a, a whack job. All right? Thanks. Hey, thanks, peeps and Eugenie. Very cool, very cool. Right, we talked about the dry drowning and stuff before. Everybody tries to bring it up in every case, you know. They want to make it seem like they've got this extra knowledge. You know, uh, what case was that that everybody was saying? Maybe it was dry. Oh, I think it was. No, it was Summer Wells, right? Remember that? Well, it was a dry drowning, everybody. She went in the water and then. All right. All right. So the rest of this, though, is, I mean, there's just notes that I took. So, you know, when they, they found his body, he had the shirt on. So that was against what everybody said. You know, these crazy YouTubers. Oh, that guy had his shirt on. There was a guy that had his shirt on. All right. Uh, we got thunder and lightning outside. So who knows? Maybe my power will shoot out. Let's see. What do we got here? Uh, I'm totally different, Warrior X. You're, you're uninformed. That means you're a lunatic. I'm absolutely different than that guy. <laughs> I'm 100% different. Uh, I do. I use factual information to do a case, not the sensationalistic garbage, and run around ambulance chasing, filming, you know, wait, oh, just hoping to God you're with the search group if you find the body. Anyways, uh, watch and shirt were found, right? So he had his, all they found on him, you guys, so I, none of us knew this. But the only thing that they found on Riley's strain was his watch and his shirt. You know the shirt that we see in there? He didn't have his jeans on. He didn't have his boots on. And now they say his wallet's missing, but of course the wallets would be in the pants. And I don't know about you, but man, uh, the it's, a, it's pretty difficult for you to, like, for boots to come off. And it's different than a pair of shoes, you know. They, 
you're in the water, but boots, man, especially if you put water in them. <laughs> That's hard to get off, right? So apparently his boots weren't on, his pants weren't on, and the wallet that was in the pants. So, you know, uh, but it, one thing that does happen, though, sometimes if you're in the water long enough and your body starts getting kind of, you know, sloughing, you know, where it gets sort of uh, soft and, you know, items can come off. It's not uncommon for people's clothing to come off if they've been drifting around in a river for a while. Uh, however, if you combine the boots and you combine the liquid not being present in the lungs, it does make you a little bit more interested, right? I mean, it's, it's more interesting. They don't know if he had a belt on. Uh, the the expert, the family uh, friend here, he said that they could see a wallet in his front pant pocket on one of the surveillance footage, and that's where he was taught to put his wallet so that people wouldn't pickpocket anybody. I mean, the water would stay in there if it ever got in there, for sure. If you're in the water, it would just keep it just be kind of like part of you you in the water. All right, and it says one of the people of interest. So, when an hour after they found the body, they saw one of the people that he was interested in. This family spokesperson and a friend. He was like, "Oh yeah, um, yeah, we saw him right there down by the bridge, and we got a bunch of other people, and we went over and we sort of surrounded the person, and we started asking him questions." But they also told the police, and the police told him, uh, interestingly. Um, that they have somebody else they're interested in. <laughs> now, you might just sort of blow by that and go, oh, so it wasn't a guy. Well, wait a minute. So the police told them they're interested in somebody? Okay, that's weird. All right, so that means right then when they say that they're interested in somebody, well, what are you interested in? I thought you said he just fell into the water. You know, like that was my, I had that at about 60%, as I said a million times. That, yeah, he, he went into the water, but I've said, but we just don't know how he got into the water. And the guy running away is interesting to me. How many times did I say that exact sentence right there? Probably a thousand, <laughs> I mean, during this, this case. Uh, so, you know, there's a guy, I mean, it, it's weird that they're saying that they're interested in somebody. Don't you think? Well, I've said it like, you know, uh, 20, uh, every single show that we did when uh, after we had that surveillance. So right here is, you know, if you remember how we did the case, we started off with this bigger circle, then we were able to just kind of get it into this area based on a, a cell tower. And then right inside of here, once the surveillance footage was released, and then it's actually right in here, right there is where he went into the water. Yeah, we know, Roxanne, yeah, thanks. We just said that. <clears throat> so here's the thing, everybody. Don't, don't repeat stuff that we say on the show that's really obvious and stuff that everybody knows. Let's see, but the, now here comes, here comes, <laughs> here comes Zozo. She's always got to put that repeat in. Here it comes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know what's weird? Eight six seven five three. Every time I see you, I, I've told you this before, but your little slap on the face, face. It's every one of those. Um, it's like uh, it always makes me think you're like saying something, and then like ah, oy vey, you know. But it's that's just your icon, you know. <laughs> that's that's how you feel like twenty four seven, I guess. Hey, thank you, TCR. Oh, and also, uh, I don't know if you guys remember that case, the Wicks family, there, that woman and her son were murdered, and we did that, and it was like her boyfriend's mom and them all sort of plotted and planned it. looks like there's some movement going on in that one. They came on, and I think it was two years ago on the show, Adrienne, was it Adriana Wicks, something like that? She came on the show, or she didn't come on, obviously, but uh, like a sister and a mother came on and, and spoke. Or I think they came on for, or at least the sister did. So that was pretty cool. And that was like two years ago. So we'll see what's happening with that. Maybe I'll have to re, 
you know, get everybody back up to speed. That one, that one was nuts. If that was today, the Wix case, oh man, <laughs> there would be so many people. Because that case was intriguing with tons of different pieces of information. There was just nobody digging around at the time. Yeah, Adriana, yeah. Some people have never worn cowboy boots. They are very good. I know. That's what I was telling them, Lisa. Cowboy boots don't come off easily. And that's where there's an issue here. You know, you got somebody that's in the water. They were in the water for a long time, though. You know, they were in the water for, gosh, I mean, how many days were they in there for? A couple weeks. And, you know, by that time, it's possible just with the currents and maybe they were trapped somewhere where there's a little bit more flow going on. Uh, so let's open up the, uh, so we can go back and look at this again then. Yeah, what time was it that we were looking at? Like it was nine. Yeah, I think it was 9.50, uh, 9.54 on here. So now we take a look at that again. See, that's what has always bugged me that there was a guy running away at 9.54 and then it slows down when they're outside of the, sort of, away from the area. I thought it was like late 50... Yeah, well, I thought it was like, yeah, 53 or 50... I guess we'll just play it. Or I could zoom in actually and then scrub it better. So hold on. I get in there like that. Okay, nope, not yet. Well, it's looking like I'm way past it now. All right. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, like 53. There, I don't think that's the person. That's a different one. Well, that's weird now, too, because that's... Maybe I, have, I think I have the clock off. Let me go find a different... Uh, this is 97. Let me go to... Uh, Ninety-six. Okay, that one. That clock looked like I had it off. There it is, right there. Oh, it is 55. So that other person might be a little bit more interesting then, too. Well, he wouldn't be there yet, so he can't be. This is the guy right here. It's 9.55 and 19. So let's see. Here we go. And you guys, don't forget to help support your local Gray Hughes Investigates YouTube channel. That would be fantastic. We're getting near the end of the month here. We've only got uh, three normal, or today, tomorrow, the next, or three more normal days after this. Then we have the final day. There he is, right there. Look. Somebody's running. Right there. And then they stop and slow down once they kind of got away. And what was interesting about this person is... Um, you know, he sort of seemed taller, like not tall, but some a weirdness regarding how high up the blue portion on the bottom is. Okay, let me go back to the 97 one, because that's where we zoomed in. And now we know it's 95-ish. There he is. See? This person's jogging away. And then right around in there, look how they slow down right there. See? And they just start walking away. Is that the person? Because that's what they were talking about on News Nation, was the person on top of the hill, uh, the guy that they talked up to that was standing at the top, they said, uh, that said, oh, he's drunk. That guy? So... You know, they were they were actually referring to that, this family friend. So I don't think they, they are totally convinced. You know, the families often though, linger on and aren't convinced. But uh, 
you know, that information about boots being missing and the pants. See, man, it just... See, I guess what would be weird is like, okay, he's in the water and then eventually... Because those pants aren't coming off if the boots, any part of a, if those boots are on his feet, like one of the boots. I mean, wouldn't one of the boots stayed on a little longer because it's so hard to get a boot off, like days later, and then the pants would be sort of difficult to slide over. They couldn't get them off at the time because there was a boot on there. But then both, when both boots were off, then the pants, if they'd already kind of moved down towards his feet, could then just easily come off. Maybe the pants themselves served as some sort of a, a um, I don't know, like a sail underwater, if you will, to pull off the boots. Yeah. Shadows on the previous look like a possible second person. Yeah, we've never thought there was a second person on this channel. I don't know what you're referring to. Uh, did they find the boots at all? No. They didn't find him. Right there. All right. So hit that like button, everybody. Uh, well, I guess we'll get started again if we get past 500, because we've got 900 people watching who all forgot to hit the like button when they came in. So here we go. And if it makes you want to leave by me saying to hit the like button, then there's the door right over there. Here we go. Hit that like button, hit that like button, hit that like button, 10, 20, 25, 30. Hit that like button, 40, 40. Do I hear 50? Do I hear 60, 60, 70, 75, 80? Hit that like button, 90. 90, hit that like button again. 20, 25, 30, 25, 20, 25, 30, 30. And we're only up to 381. We're going to have to do it again. Hit that like button, hit that like button, 10, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 25, 50, 90, 20, 20, hit that like button, hit that like button, hit that like button, it's the easiest damn thing in the world to do. All right, so here's the thing, everybody. The like button is one of the easiest things in the world to do. You just grab your finger and you press. <laughs> Nobody does that. Well, I guess you have your cell phone you do. You take the mouse and you click on the thumbs up, okay? It's so simple. Now, if we get to 500, we'll keep on mo moving here. But if we don't get there with 940 people watching, forget it. I'm fired out of it now, 10, down, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, God. I'm gonna watch it, Gray. I don't like you. Why would I hit the like button, though, you bastard? Okay, don't hit it then. All right. Hey, thanks, Mama She13. Oh, hey, K came in at the right time. Love the auctioneer. <laughs> All right, cool. Thanks, Lisa Mounts and Naomi McFarlane up there. Hey, we got to 517. Absolutely simple. But by the way, if you're if you don't have any arms or hands, you can definitely use your nose to hit that like button. I've seen it done. Gosh, Gray. Other channels don't make us hit the like button, you bastard. Okay, well, I do, so... Not all the time. But why not tonight? So let's look at that again. Here we go. So just well, well, then we'll look at this the timing again here. No, we can't, Michelle. I'm doing something else. Hey, thanks, Kevin Moley. I mean, you can talk about him in the chat if you feel like it. I'm I'm not going over that case. Is there anything that's new in it or that happened today or? Now right there, okay, so about 9.55 and 18 seconds, they're running. And then right there, they slow down, okay? So now when you look at from above, 
It's interesting. This is what we've always been saying here. So he came running from here. He was underneath there. So it would have been there at like 944 and 50 seconds or so, right? Then it runs over, well, maybe maybe quicker. I mean, they're really slow, I guess. But let's just say 955. They come running out from here. They pass where the camera is, which is right there. It shows up in the camera. And then when they get to about right there, they slow down. So look how they, they're there. And then right when they're kind of going over here, they slow down and start walking. I think that's interesting. All right, I'll turn on the bots. I know you can't see anything. Look, what am I looking at, looking at, looking at at Truth Sleuth? What am I looking at, looking? You have to fill in the sentence afterwards, okay? Has the fraternity brothers ever gave an interview? Well, they have nothing to do with anything. Let's see, uh, Mastiff Heart, let's see. Someone who just pushed someone in the water runs farther than that. Look at, look at, look at, look at. <laughs> Straight drop. What do you mean it's on 543? What does that even mean, Jen? Nobody knows what that means. All right, so here we go. We've got, um, remember, he passed the police car over here at like 9.51 and some odd sec. Whoa, what's going on with all this? What happened? I'm going to turn it off. Hold on. Whoa, what happened there? My bot was... God, what happened there? Uh-oh, my stream bot. You, you told me to turn on the bot and it just wrecked everything. Oh, hold on. I'm going to have to do this. <laughs> I don't know how to stop that. Hold on, I'll have to figure it out. Though. You'll have to wait a second. You'll have to wait a second. God, you guys. Jesus. Chat bot. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me go to Streamlabs. I don't know how to get it to stop doing any of this here. I might be able to, though, if I can get into here. Alright. Sign it out. Disconnect. I don't know how to fix... Can you guys see all those chats going on? It's crazy. It's like a... It wants me, you guys, to join the GHI, the missing group, apparently. I think it's uh, like a hack. <laughs> Hold on a second, though. I mean, that, that's just the chat, though. I mean, it's, if you don't, I guess if we can't fix it, we're just going to have to let me just log out of here. Okay, does that fix it? No. Okay, I'm going to do a Control-Alt-Delete with the... Uh, task manager and see if I can find the uh, it's called chatbot right oh there it is right there in in task in task in task that possibly could have fixed it okay is that gonna fix it let's go let's go let's see hey look at that don't ever forget to use the the old control alt delete method <laughs> man that was brutal that thing just kept going and going and going and going at least it made it look like my uh, maybe that's a cool thing to do you can make it look like there's a lot of people trying to chat and uh, YouTube's like hey get people over there I guess what we'll have to do is put uh, look at like 30 people left because they just oh I don't like it when the chat goes by like that you bastard if it could just be Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so I turned off a lot of different things right there. Signed out a whole bunch of things. So right now, nothing's going to work. There's going to be no... Let me try... I know how to turn it off now, so I'll try to see if the chat bot resets itself now and it's normal. 
And if it just starts whacking out again, I'll do it. Because the, the mods use it. That's right. That's right. You bastard. <laughs> Great. I'll give you an extra chat going. Uh, just to bug you, I guess. All right. So that one's open. Does it work? Let's try Type in e. I'm gonna do email. There we go. And we'll pull out my email address. Let's see. Oh yeah, you could just block the chat bot. I guess. Okay, so it works. It's working now. That's right. I'm so mean. All right. Let me go back to. I'll read you guys the news that came out though. So here it is again. The original coroner. You know, when he did the autopsy, he said, no obvious sign of trauma with weapons. The cor coroner stated there was a lack of water in his lungs, but it leaked out there somehow. No water in his lungs. Lack of water. That's a little strange, isn't it? A little weird. And that's usually because the person isn't breathing anymore when they went into the water. And But then how did that happen? Like, if there's no trauma to him, how did he... Or obvious signs of foul play. Maybe there's a, you know, something on his head that he hit a rock and, you know, but he'd have to be dead. I mean, if you hit your head, you'd probably just be knocked out and you would still be breathing for a minute and probably would have went in the water and breathed in the water. So I don't really know that, you know, why, you know, that doesn't really make sense. Somebody would have had to, like, strangle him up above and then place him in the water after that and then he sank. And they're still waiting for the toxicology report. Well, it, it, it said no trauma like from a weapon, truth loop. It didn't say no trauma at all. It said no obvious signs of trauma with a weapon, like a gunshot wound or a knife wound, something like that. Now, if there's a bash on his head, you know, maybe that's trauma that they would just go, oh, that's him falling. Right, but they've already done this. Like a, they're already working on a second autopsy now. Well, wouldn't they find vomit in his lungs, Nicole? Yeah. Well, uh, let's see. Dry drowning. Oh, here we go with the dry drowning. Oh, uh, these sleuthy people that show up with the dry drowning. Oh yes, everybody, it's dry drowning. I just want you to let you know that there's something called dry drowning and definitely could have been the... All right, so uh, what it was found was, I guess we could go back to, uh, go back in time. Let me go to 95. It's gotta be one where he's on, the one I did where he's on surveillance. So that's the full, normal, full video. How about that one? Oh, it's still that one. Okay, so we can take a look at him here. I think the best one is when he's right there. Oh, it's in his hand. So that's a, from a video. And it looks like his right hand. Uh, just stumbling quite a bit. All right. So basically, the pants that you see in this right here are gone, and the boots, and all he had on was a shirt and a watch. Thanks, Emily Flotilla Never Illa. Yeah, so 10, 10 or 15 percent don't get in there? Okay. But when you combine that there's no water in the lungs with him missing boots and pants, I know that you can lose clothing when you're in the rivers. That, that happens all the time. But, I mean, boots, boy, that's, uh, boots are tough to get off. And especially if you put water in the boots, then it's even harder. Could police see if they can identify cars with possible possible dash cams? Um, 
Yeah, they've been doing. I mean, anything that you think of that's kind of basic like that, they've done. You know what I mean? Like anything that we go, hey, have they checked cell tower? You know, I, I never ask that question because I, I think it's like, it's obvious that they do those things. Uh, boots would get waterlogged and swell, making it easier. Uh, you think so? I don't think so. Let's see. So, yeah, maybe. I mean, you're saying like they get with water and they get kind of stretchy and come off. Yeah, I mean, I guess. And then when those came off, then his pants could come off. Oh, 10 to 15 have water in their lungs? That doesn't really of drowning victims. That's weird. That's kind of that doesn't really make any sense to me. Let me see. Uh, what percentage of drowning victims have water in their lungs? In most people, the uh, relaxes sometimes after unconsciousness due to hypo hypoxia in the larynx and water can then enter the lungs causing a wet drowning. However, about 7 to 10 percent of the people maintain the seal. Okay, so yeah, so that is what I thought. So 7 to 10 percent of the people the seal maintains and they don't get water in their lungs. So there's a 10 percent chance, so that's kind of low odds, right? I mean, it's not great. It's not terrible either. Uh, but would you risk your life on a 10% bet? Would you even... <laughs> I, I doubt. If Riley had narrow feet and calves, uh, boots could come off in water. Yeah, I mean, it's not like, it's not impossible for the boots to come off in the water. You know, it's not like... Uh, you know, and, and then the wallet would be in the pocket, right? So it's not like, oh, see, everyone's going, oh, my God, the wallet's missing. The way they worded it on um, News Nation is like, he's missing his wallet and his jeans. Okay, well, he's missing his jeans. His wallet was in the jeans, right? I mean, that's the real way to look at it. Not saying, he's missing his wallet. Ooh, somebody stole it. Not saying somebody didn't steal it. But you notice how they word things like that, where it makes you, it, it implies a nefarious tone when, of course, if his jeans are missing, he'd be missing his wallet because it was in the jeans. Does that make sense? I don't know. I don't, I'm not, I don't really want to talk about dry drowning. Yeah. Kids these days were loose fit, wear loose fitting boots, not even the shoelace, not even the shoelace tightly. Uh, why? That's why I don't watch. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, I just watch. See, like the thing is, I watched Nancy Grace today. Because she had on the police in the um, Caleb Harris case. She actually interviewed the police and the father. So those people have information that's interesting. And so I took a bunch of notes on that one. Have, you got any of you, have any of you been following that case? Because I've had a folder built for like a, uh, weeks. I just never really had time to get to it because I kept covering, you know, the Riley strain and then we switched uh, over to, you know, a couple different other cases. Mm -hmm. You haven't heard of it? Yeah, well, you'll see how interesting it is in a minute, in a little bit. I thought we could do, how about I open up the lines here for a little bit and let me know what you're thinking now because it does make it a little bit more interesting. Oh, yeah. Okay, now here's the key, though. Right, Truth Sleuth? So listen to this. So, you know, the family friend that's looking around, he said, one of the people of interest they talked to for an hour. So they did. You know how, like, people develop people of interest. So the family friend, they saw the guy, 
uh, no, an hour, not, not for an hour. They talked to a person of interest an hour after Riley's body was found. They went down to the same place by the river, and there's this guy that was a person of interest. They were talking to him, and then they let the police know, and the police said, uh, we have... Uh, we, we're not interested in that guy. We have somebody else we're interested in. Now, most people will just... <laughs> it's weird how people skip over that part because that right there implies that the police are interested in somebody. Okay, so they must have thought that it was the way... You know, it's in a homeless area, an encampment. He... Right when he goes into that area, he somehow ends up in the water, downstream, without his boots, his pants, and he doesn't have water in his lungs. And you put all those together, you start going, man, what are the odds of that? What are the odds of that? That he just happened to fall over right at a homeless encampment that nobody seemed to see him fall into the water at. Anybody hear what I'm saying? I don't see any comments back. That's what you generally lets us know that you're speaking and have ideas about what I just said. Yeah, it makes it where the odds are getting kind of low at that point. And thank you, uh, Connie, my one flipping, flipping life, and Amber Maiden, with a length of time it's hard to determine Water lungs due to decomp. Yeah, but the water can stay in there though, because that's inside. You know. Well, let's let's look that up. Let's see. Uh, well, it's hard to type in exactly what that would. A question. So, anyways, I'm still, you know, I'm 60 percent that he just fell in and he went downstream, and like I said before, it was like 30 percent. Uh, that something somebody pushed him. I'm not sure it was that. Yeah, it was like 30% that there's somebody else, and that's why he ended up in the water. Or what, what was what was the 30%? It was let's see, that he fell in 30% that something happened to him, and then people took advantage of the situation and put him into the water, and then a smaller the last 10% is like it's all nefarious. Somebody like attacked him. Yeah, took his wallet and threw him in the water. I guess we we could do a poll then, right? Let's do one. All right, here we go. Here we go. Start a poll. Um. Okay, I'm going to do it two different things. Accident. Okay. I'm not telling you what it is because I don't like when people start typing it in. There we go. What is the answer? We got 55 people that left because I took a minute to make a poll. <laughs> All right, here we go. That oh, was weird. It's not, I can't only see one option. How come it doesn't let me see them? Oh, there you have to click on it. Accident. Man, look at that. Look at it. It's just right down the middle, like 33, 33, 33, 33. Although, you know, it's interesting because it's almost exactly my percentages, right? Because we're at 62% an accident. Although I had, mine's like 90 with that. But, you know, accident is 60-something percent. And then 37% so far think that a, um, it's completely nefarious. Right. 
And that's where, and then we go back to the guy who said he saw somebody up above talking to him and said, oh, he's drunk. That guy, that guy seems interesting. The guy that yelled up, <laughs> you know, unless he really did see somebody up there. Because that's a great way to deflect from you to say, oh, he was already, he was up there. I didn't see him after that. But if you were down there in your tent and he went into the water, you would have heard him go into the water because you were aware and awake and listening. And he went into the water right at that moment. And it's right there next to you because that tent is down there. You guys, you know, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it just, it doesn't make sense. So, so the homeless guy that yelled up and said, he, he goes, oh yeah, I heard somebody up there talking to him. He said, oh, he's okay. He's just drunk. If he went into the water, then that guy in the blue, the guy that was in the tent down below the bridge, that I think that's him because he was looking up. Wouldn't he have seen and heard him literally falling and like, ah, you know, going into the water there? So maybe he sort of, Riley fell and he's in that category of opportunist and he just doesn't want to, doesn't want to say it. Yeah, a commotion. That's what he said, like a commotion. And he yelled up, what's going on? And the guy said, oh, we're just, it's just somebody drunk. And he ends up in the water right down below the bridge because that's where his ID was found. So how come the guy that yelled up didn't see that? Anyways, that's just a thought that you might have. There could be an, a whole different explanation, etc. I'm just saying. Could he have went off the bridge? No. Gray, you mentioned earlier, early on questioning the guy that said he heard someone saying he's... Right. Yeah, I did. I, I talked about that pretty soon after. You know, I think I might have seen other people talking about it. I was like, yeah, that's a good point. I think somebody else brought it up on the show, actually. And then I thought, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, it was something that popped into my head at one time, too. Just like, well, who's this guy? But, you know, they're not even showing his face. They're just show, showing his feet. All right, I'm ending the poll now. You guys had time to click it. 298 people. And the final results are nefarious one, but it's last, really. I mean, you know, so you go... Nefarious, 37%, and then accident, 62%. And then just somebody opportunist there. So we're still kind of in that same category. Well, you, you took too long, Bree. You know, it was up there for enough time for anybody to click on it. Well, Gray, I was just waiting my turn. Well, you know what? On YouTube, you don't have to wait your turn to click on the uh, the button up there. You just... And by the way, how did you know it wasn't your turn yet? Does it, somebody in the chat go, well, I voted, now it's your turn. I just give up on any case guessing who, what, when, where, unless I have all the interviews and autopsies. Well, good for you, Betty. This isn't a place for you. We just use the facts that are available and uh, theorize based on those facts, okay? If you want people just to sit around uh, like a bumps on a log, waiting for every piece of information to come in, then, man, what a boring life. Let's see. Hey, how's it going? Well, cool, Donna. All right. Yeah, I know. I didn't spell it right. I know. I, I could see that after I put it up there. I, I even know how to spell it because I have a channel called Nefarious and Merchandise with the Nefarious, but I just spelled it that way. So when you say, says the jackass who can't spell it. <laughs> what an idiot. Jesus. <whistles> wow. Obviously the mods aren't around again. And good luck. Find another place to be a troll at. Says the jackass that can't even spell it. <laughs> All right. 
Let's see. And stand straight. Donnie Brook, I knew I took them. Uh, he hit his head the first time when he fell and hit the cement after that. Well, I think he, no, I think he just, no, because when you look at it, he would fall over the edge, roll down, and he would fall straight down 20 feet. There's nothing else to hit his head on first. We've already gone over all that. So he just would have, like, gone over the first one because he's tall. Uh, like, you can go on to Street View and take, you can see it. Yeah, right there. See, look how, look how, uh, that, I mean, that's like two feet. You know, if he walked over there, he falls, and then just really steep stuff, loose dirt, and then it goes off a 20-foot cliff. This little thing over here is like 40 feet away from the edge there. It's way, it's nowhere near the way this looks. Like, if you back up here and then look back over, here, I'll show you if I can move. Yeah, it's so not clear. What an idiot. Uh, yeah, way in, way over there, that same wall that you're looking at. And once you get there, it's right there. And then when you are when you take that, go one more in, see, now it looks like it's closer, but it's really not. Yep. But hey, guys, let's get going. We're uh, only about 60% of the goal tonight. It'd be great to get here before we even get to the Caleb Harris case. All right, so if you can help support the channel, we got the end of the month coming up here. Uh, yes, it helps me too, but it also, uh, I give away a ton of money. We've already given away three and a half, three thousand five hundred dollars this month so far. Um, and by the way, the United Cajun Navy is different than the other Cajun navies out there. They, there's a whole bunch of other ones that tried to copy them. They're the ones that they're a nonprofit. Uh, you know, what I thought was funny is, um, you know, so in the Sebastian Rogers case, Nancy Grace interviewed, uh, and he, she was, you could tell the look on her face. She was like trying to get at the Cajun Navy guy. And she said, Cajun Navy and, and mention, she goes, okay, so you're from the Cajun Navy and we mention the website.com and all this shit. And he goes, well, yeah, there's a lot of groups out there that um, are mocking or mimicking us and pretending they're the Cajun Navy. We're actually United Cajun Navy, and our website is unitedcajunnavy.org. And she just went, okay, whatever. You know, like, look, what do you mean whatever? <laughs> like, you gave him the wrong, of course he's going to be upset a little bit because you put out the wrong address and, and um, website for one of the posers out there. Yeah, Jesus. Um, his shirt was loose. Seems like he would have would have come off. Yeah, why didn't his shirt come off? Out of all the things, I mean, his shirt. Doesn't it seem like he should have been almost nude with his wristwatch on? I mean, if you're gonna like his pants come off, his boot, his boots, then his pants, and then. Thank you, Kylie. I guess you were the only one that heard. Did EquiSearch get involved with uh, Riley's search? I don't think so. I think Texas EquiSearch, though, anything that's on land, or I, I would get Texas EquiSearch first over anybody. I think it's kind of ludicrous that people don't get a hold of them. I mean, those guys, they get answers. They know what they're doing. And um, Tim Miller is like, he gets people to talk. I mean, he's a, uh, he actually, one time he went to a bar with one of the guys and said, listen, listen. They know you did it. You need to, uh, and the guy goes, okay. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's amazing, Tim Miller is. He's not like the rest of these guys. I mean, I'm, I'm okay supporting other organizations, but uh, you know, those guys are the best. I don't, they didn't mention anything about his underwear. I don't know. I didn't hear if he had his underwear on. 
It was spotted just after the second bridge. What was spotted? Who are you talking to? You got a full, full uh, get a full sentence in when you respond to somebody. Nobody's just waiting for your reply. All right, type in a full sentence and then put in what you're saying so that people know what you're saying. So somebody said they spotted Riley in the water past the second bridge early on. Somebody said that. I mean, why, why didn't they put that out in the public early at, at the beginning, if that's true? They did, Gray. You just didn't hear it. No, if they'd put that out there, everybody would have um, heard that. That that's uh, maybe they wanted to keep the publicity going. Yeah, that doesn't sound true to me. I think if he was in the water, floating downstream, the, everybody would have known that already, and would have quit searching in that area. They would have looked way downstream where he was. We already asked that question, Cindy. Didn't they mean was spotted on the land after the second bridge? Uh, I don't know what they meant. Somebody else filled in the sentence for him. That's why it's bad when you don't fill in a sentence. Right. That's right. He was spotted at the post just barely after. Like, no, no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. He was spotted on the other post down at this bridge over here. So you're incorrect when you say that. We went over this whole thing. I'll show you. He was spotted at this post right here, this one. And there was some kind of elevator or something up here that filmed him. And then he walked this way, and they could spot him until he passed the yellow sign right here. See what I'm saying, you guys? When you do the factual... Uh, investigation of information that the people actually say then you get it yeah see I think it's that that sign there you want it to be this yellow sign over here because uh, he was talking about right next to the where the people were the, the tent was thanks Heather N appreciate it thanks for uh, thinking of me Become a channel member. Yes, and by the way, we're at zero channel members tonight. Is there any way that you guys could be channel members or some freaks could get some channel members? Or You know, I think that'd be great. Wonder why not. He was the last person to see Riley alive. Hmm? I don't, none, none of the roommates or anything like that are suspicious to me whatsoever. If you guys are talking about that. Now, the homeless person that maybe uh, was down there, sure. I mean, you got to talk to all those people. And it does, the door to it being some sort of nefarious element has been opened now by the investigation. And I think it's interesting that the police told the family uh, friend that they have a different, uh, someone else that they're interested in. <laughs> So what, what are you interested in? I thought he just fell into the water, like you said. So obviously they're interested in somebody, so they must think there's something doesn't quite add up in their investigation or they wouldn't keep have somebody that they're interested in. Does that make sense? Hey, look at that. Emily Flotilla, Amber Maiden, Lisa Mounts, all gifted memberships to Verdi, who... And then also, um, Deanna May and Nikki, not, not, not Nikki, who got that one? Oh, and Sam R. There you go. Yeah, so by the way, you guys, when you uh, answer questions to other people in the chat, tag them or write a full sentence in. You know, for the off chance that somebody else might be reading it, and want to know what the hell you're talking about. Like if I said, nope, it was butter. And then you say, what do you mean, nope, it's butter? What do you mean, nope, it's butter? Who, who, what are you talking about? Oh, well, somebody up above asked if uh, the sandwich I was eating in my Facebook page 
If that was peanut butter or just regular butter. Oh, okay. How, how would anybody know that, though? Well, they wouldn't. Uh, yeah. Hey, thanks, uh, Linda Dees. Hey, look at that. D.D. Ray from London. Where is everybody uh, coming? You know, what uh, state or country are you in here? Let's see. What do we got? Let's see what we got here. We got one, a UK. You don't, don't say like the city, just say your state. Colorado, Washington, New Jersey, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, Sydney. Hey, got some more Australians in there. Whoa, it went by so fast. Florida, Virginia, Springfield, Missouri, Springfield. Uh, that's uh, where that one case, Springfield 3, I think. Uh, let's see, Texas, Wisconsin, Utah. We got Eugenie from Oregon. Oregon. <laughs> yeah, Michigan, South Carolina, Canada, Utah, South Carolina. Man, you know it'd be cool to be able to do a poll where you have all the states. And then... Maybe I can try that one night, and then people click on it, and then you go, wow, look at that. 10% of the people come from Texas, Iowa, Colorado. A lot of, lot of Texas in there. Daryl's in Brazil. Oklahoma. What's MZ stand for? <laughs> Bay Area. <laughs> Yeah, Australia's where Zozo's from. She's only said it a thousand times. Uh, Ohio, another Oregon, LW. I guess we got, got a few Oregon people in here. That's cool. You know what's weird is I always look at the numbers, and it's amazing how impatient people are. You know, you take a few minutes talking about something else, and they just bail because they just can't. It's just, I need, I need instant stimuli. Uh, Leah Baker, thank you, said, I'm late in stream. What type of boots? Oh, he had square-toed cowboy. No, wait, that's, yeah. Square-nose, uh, square it said. They were called just Justin Cowboy Boots, I guess, that brand. And then... Wallet missing was seen in front pocket on surveillance. So it's not really missing. It was in his pants. So his pants are, came off. So I guess it's missing with the pants. But if he's missing his pants, likely he'd just be missing the wallet as a byproduct. They don't know if he had a belt on. One of the people of interest they talked to, uh, an hour after the, his death, you know, after they reported his body found, and then they told the police, hey, we were, we're talking to the guy that we, we have this person that we're interested in. And the police said, hey, we, that's not, uh, we don't think he has anything to do with it. We're interested in somebody else. So that should tell you that they must think that there's a possibility that there's more to the story if they have somebody else they're interested in. Hey, thank you, Kathy Frydenmaker. Okay, well, um, well, let me, let's, what time is it? I've only been on, for, I'll open up the phone lines for, I don't know, 35 minutes on this one. And let me know what you guys think. All right, here we go, got that. Uh, get the number on the screen. There it is. <laughs> here we go, everybody. Here we go. Dun, 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 dun. Who's calling in? What do you think about this? Do you think this adds to the nefarious quotient? What's wrong? Notice me, CHI. What's wrong? See, just typing in wrong doesn't let anybody know what you're talking about. Oh, and then Tennessee, Colorado. Or do you live in a country called wrong? Wow, who would want to live there? You know, attention spans are short these days. Yeah, exactly. I always thought it was foul play. Hey, thanks, Chris Kress. See, look at Sirius Black was listening to my jokes. She got it. She got it. All right. 
<laughs> you live in Hong Kong. <laughs> oh, jeez. Let's see. You're a trooper. Is it Thursday evening? I am. You're a trooper. Who? What are you talking about? Wet denim is heavy pants would sink. Yeah, maybe that would make them fall off easier too. No, oh, look at that. Look at that, everybody. This is Gray. Who is this? Uh, hey, Gray. This is Cindy. You're in, the, you're in the gray zone. All right, <laughs> All right there you go. What's going on? Yeah. Oh, I just driving home was going to talk about that case a little bit. This like this is Cindy uh, J. It's Cindy J. I can tell. I, uh, that's what I thought with your voice. Yeah. Yeah, this is my country hick accent. Here we go, everybody. Here we go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What do you got? Honestly, I, I honestly I don't have a really strong opinion about it. I think it's I think it's sketchy a little bit because you got the guy running away when you when you said that I wasn't I mean I really thought he drowned but now that his pants are missing his boots are missing uh and no no liquid in the lungs it's sketchy yeah I mean all you combine all those together you know there's a, there's a good explanation like you can take each one of those it's sort of like uh circumstantial evidence kind of like you could take each right. one of those and try to explain it away. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, his, his, you know, his shoes, his boots would come off, and then once the boots came off, his pants could come off. That's where the wallet's missing in there. He's one of the ten percent of the people that don't get water in their lungs when they drown. And you know, you can go with that. But now that we know that the police said that they have somebody that they're interested in, are you doing laundry? Is the phone in your laundry machine? Me? No. <laughs> Well, so it's so loud. It's like, what's going on over there? Oh, I'm driving. I don't know if it's that, maybe. Oh, okay. I don't think that's what it was. Yeah, probably. So, the police have a person of interest. Is that what the family friend said? Well, he said, yeah, that's not the per they're They're interested in somebody else, they said. Somebody else, yeah. Hmm. They didn't really say person of interest. I mean, I guess that's what that means, right? Well, yeah. yeah. So... The family friend, the guy that said, oh, he's just drunk, is that who their person of interest was? Um, let's see. Or somebody, do we know even? No, well, that, that was what the family, the, the family was interested in the guy that was up above who said they saw, um, the guy that was actually above that said he, there was a, uh, that said he was drunk. You know, remember, because right. the guy down below right. heard a commotion and then yells up. Apparently, they know who the guy is, so that that's a real thing, apparently, that happened. So that would, huh. so if that really did happen, I mean, then it sort of takes away the guy down below, you know, because that, right. means, that means that's real. It's not an invented story, but... Um, Do we know, was there, is that a place where the homeless, like an encampment was at that time? Because I remember when you went over by the statues and then that's i think where the guy ran from is it was there a homeless encampment there at that time is there any way for us to see well underneath the bridges there was a homeless encampment they showed it on video the there's bridge. like tents and, yeah mm. yeah he never he made he never um, made it past the bridge i mean some people think maybe that's the yellow sign but i don't think so because the camera they so were saying because the reason i don't think it's right. that's the right sign there was because the way they described right. it was there was a camera up in the air that was filming him. They could see him here, and then he disappeared. Well, they would have said right. he disappeared when he went under the bridge, and there's no way that a camera that could film over there would film somebody walking by this yellow sign. So I think it's this sign right here. And the next place he's going to be is right there. Uh, oops. Hello. Is that between... Don't don't yell at me. Is that between the first and second bridge? Yeah. Why would I yell at you? Mm. Mm. Why would I yell at you, Cindy? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm not looking at what you're saying, so I, I I can't see. I mean, I remember where the yellow sign is, so but I'm not looking at what you're pointing to. So. 
Yeah, it's getting right. closer to the second bridge. Don't you think he was just like a, a wounded duck out there and anybody that nefarious would jump right on that? I mean, he's just so, you know, he's so wobbly. You know immediately he's drunk, lost. Yeah. Nobody's around him. I mean, he's just he's just perfect for taking right there. Yeah, I mean, I think he just looked like an easy mark, you know. Just, right, exactly, exactly. Yeah. And I'm interested in the toxicology because... I really do think that there is, and I, this may be stupid, but, I mean, we've heard a lot about it. We've had two or three cases in Arkansas where people's drink, drinks were drugged. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's not a uncommon. I mean, it's not, not real common, but it, it is a common thing. But, I mean, I don't know. He just, he, he was just wasted, it looked like. Yeah. Yeah, he was. He, anyway. still, he looked like Kanika Jenkins. He was falling all over the place. He did. He looked, he looked grabbing that wall. Or that's when you on call it intoxicated. That's intoxicated. Yeah, intoxicated. <laughs> I wonder if he had any issues, uh, like she did, any type of medicines or anything he was on that maybe um, affected his his drunkenness, his mm. inebriation. Right. It'd right. be interesting to know. Yeah, I think it's going to end up that he just really had a lot of alcohol in him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it could be that he, I mean, I, I don't know, maybe he took something that was more of a, just some other sort of, like, recreational drug with it. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, I don't know, but, uh, you know, they, a lot of times when, what, when you're in fraternities, you go, you're at the hotel and you just sit there and you drink. Like, you would just sit there right. and pound liquor out so that when you go out, you're, you, you know, you got your game on. You're like, yeah, you know. Yeah, you already do. You know, yeah. pre-funk pre is what they in. call it. They call it pre-funk. That's what we used to call it. Like, pre-funk. Pre-function. Pre pre-game. Pre yeah. yeah. That's what we always called it, pre-game. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. Well, I'm interested to hear about the Caleb Harris case. I'm glad you're on it. So yeah, I did, yeah. Um, that's crazy. That, that that's the one I'm really interested in. I haven't. I have seen. I've seen his name and stuff on X, but I haven't. I haven't read anything about it because I figured you'd get on it. So I'm ready. Well, to I've had people that message me about it, but I've had a folder for like two weeks sitting there, and finally. I wondered cause when I saw it the other day. I saw it been going on for a while, and I I just hadn't really heard anything about it. So I'm yeah. interested in that. So anyway, I just call in to kill time here while I'm driving to my house. Awesome. <laughs> well, have fun. Thanks for calling in. <laughs> All right. Thanks for taking my call. All right. Bye -bye. So, there we go. See ya. Cindy J. My sister on the show. I mean, we just like, ah, always battling back and forth. That's all right. Hey, look at that. Mom, is she 13? Gifted five memberships. Whew. Wow. Haven't seen that avocado in a long time, you guys. It's been a long time. Can you, Caleb Case? I did. I did like and subscribe. I'm broke. What? What are you talking about? Who's this? I call BS person. Can you, Caleb Case? I did like and subscribe. I'm broke thanks to administration. <laughs> what? What does that got to do with anything? I, I. I just. I don't get it. I'm confused. Police have reported he was still when he went in. What? He was still? How do you know he was still when he went in? What does that mean? Are we having one of those weird chat nights again, you guys? Uh, I've already said, I think it's like... Uh, 60 percent it was an accident then 30 percent where he it's like an accident but then somebody you know took advantage of the situation and then it was 10 percent nefarious but now it sort of moves the nefarious up to like 15 percent i mean i don't know man it's just wild in chat tonight absolutely crazy
Who's still alive? Who are you talking about? No, they, they found Riley Strain's body a while ago. <laughs> Anyways, okay, I'm going to... Uh, nobody else is... Uh, maybe somebody else called in. I don't know if they did or not. Anybody else want to call in about this? If not, we're going to switch over. Oh, right, there's a call right there. All right, here we go. Hello. Who's this? This is Merrick. Merrick? Yes. Like M E or Karen, either. either oh, Mel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you didn't say it right. It's it's Nerok. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> you said Nerok. It's like, wow, is that a real name or you know? Okay, yeah, it's Nerok. She doesn't like to say Karen because now you can't if you if you're called a Karen, you know, it's like, oh, jeez. But she's a normal Karen. I everybody. know. Yes, or if you were my husband, you could call me honey, but yeah, that wouldn't <laughs> apply here. <laughs> All right. So what do you think? Um, you know what I was thinking? What's always kind of bothered me with this case is you have this homeless encampment, and you have these people that have said, hey, he's just drunk, blah, blah, blah. And you're telling me that he's walking, if he's walking around down there, if they don't know what happened to him, he's walking five feet, he's walking here, yeah. and nobody knows, these witnesses don't know what happened. Well, that's what I was saying I earlier. I have a hard time. I mean, how come none of the homeless people, especially the guy that yelled up, you know, the guy that said, hey, there's a yes. commotion up there. Well, he was down there, so he's only going to be like 20 feet away from where he went into the water. Exactly. So, so that's sense. always bothered me. Yeah. So anyway, that's just kind of, it's always just bothered me, that part of it. And then the one card just hanging out. Although if he did really at the bar try to pay for a tab, if that's really true, he might have not put the one card back. So that could explain that the one card might have been not put back in his wallet. You know, that could be and fell out so that or somebody rifled through it you know and discarded it so that could go either way but but that just the witnesses alone i'm sorry there's there's just more to that i just don't believe these witnesses down there i just there's something off on that but anyway that's my two cents on it well i think it's a good thought there because it's like people aren't talking so that's why i was thinking well maybe he fell and then they were like okay Let's get his wallet. Let's take his this and that, and then they throw him in the water. But I mean, are they exactly? People? But you might if, if somebody has his boots, man. Maybe you look around and find somebody. He has pretty big feet, though. Yeah, size fifteen, they say. But I supposedly, guess bigger so. feet is, is better because it fits everybody, kind of. Like I mean, somebody with size ten could put their foot in it. They just look weird on them. They look like flippers, but uh, yeah. And then you know their story. I mean. How, I mean, what are the odds that they're telling the truth on what happened down there anyway? I mean, my husband's retired um, highway patrol officer in Arizona, and so it's like, you know, you then you got to first believe what they're saying is true and what they're reporting anyway. So it's like, whatever. You know, I just, I don't know. I would go back to these witnesses. I just, I just don't believe them. But anyway. Yeah. Well, I think... Uh... I know. I guess we'll we'll see at some point. Here. Yep. Anyway, good to talk to you, and uh, we will talk to you later. Thank you. Well, thanks for calling in, Nerok. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. All right. See you. Bye. <laughs> she said Nerik, and I was like, Nerik? Yeah, that's different. But if she said Nerok, I would have got it. I got it. Anybody else on this one? We're gonna switch cases here in a minute. Um, no, we don't know about the underwear and socks. Could have been trying to take a leak and lost his footing. A leak. Let's see what this one says here. God, what in the hell? I hate when it's new windows. This is great. 
Hello? Hello, Gray. Hello, yep. Hi. Hello from Oregon. Well, cool. Who is this? Deanna. Okay. <laughs> well, what's going on? <laughs> okay, well, um, something's gotten stuck in my craw again, as they say. Um, I was going to mention to you that if someone were um, struggling, you know, they, they had fallen in, okay? Mm -hmm. If you had boots on, especially cowboy boots that could potentially hold a lot of water, those themselves could drown you. You would need to get them off. Yeah, I mean, if but you boots on, they fill with water, they can drag you down. Yeah. Well, however, if he didn't have any, if he didn't have water in his lungs, he he didn't drown. No, they're, well, they said there's 7 to 8 per 10 percent of people don't have water in their lungs, even if they were alive when they went into the water. That's is there, well, what's weird to me is, is that, like, how do you how do you drown? I mean, I guess you it's um, I guess you know that dry drowning crap that they're talking about. But um, I mean, I guess it just means you sort of suffocate underwater because there's no air. Water just never made it into your lungs because you're a specific body part. There's a thing that opens up on some people it doesn't, and so maybe you still aren't breathing, and then you end up sort of suffocating underwater. I bet I think that's more so of what dry drowning stop, is, is that you're just suffocating you know, underwater. Yeah. If you, if, if you... Why not? I, you know, I think everybody gets stopped. it. You know, everybody gets, like, if you, you get knocked out, you're rolling, the, you're, you're going to the water, you're still alive, and you're trying to breathe, but the water doesn't go into your lungs, but you're not awake to realize, oh, I got to get up, then you're going to die, you're not going to get enough oxygen, and then you'll end up dying. Yeah. Well, let me let me throw a big rock in this. <laughs> oh boy! Okay. Here we go. Yeah. What if? Okay, so um, there's that. I guess there's a potentiality for that. I'm, you know, I don't believe I've ever heard an expert, you know, talk about it. So I I can't say that I really know about that condition. However, I I do know of cases where people have been weighed down. And at some point, they pop up or pop out of their restraints, or they pop out of their clothes. Because of the gases. Okay. Yeah, the gases. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, and movement of water and things getting caught, you know. So his pants being gone, I wondered if somebody had attached him to something heavy, you know, rock or whatever, by his belt or something like that and thrown him in. Seems like they would have so found him because the, they looked all around in that area with those boats with the sun, the cameras. They would have seen him. So, no, I don't yeah, think that happened. Yeah. Because they would have seen him Unless quick. Unless there was a delay. Well, there wasn't too much of a delay. I mean, they were in the water pretty quickly after that looking around, I think. I don't know. I don't know, really. Because remember, it no, seemed like there was, even a, seems like there was the a couple day. days. I know, but, he, but that wouldn't be enough time to... For ga you can't gases don't even form for like two weeks to where you float up, and that water right. is pretty shallow in that area. They w should have been able to find them. So, what's your next point? Well, it, it's uh, it's not adding up. It's not adding up. So we don't have the toxicology back or whatever. But uh, I know some people are tired of hearing about this case. But I appreciate you bringing, uh, you know, you keeping it in the in the focus for now. You know, until we get some answers. So um, I believe his family, yeah. you know, deserve, you know, answers. And yeah. if anybody um, did this to him, that they um, that they pursue yeah. uh, catching. So. That's what I hope. I mean, I hope. But it doesn't deserve. add up. You know, his wallet being, pro you know, verified in his pants, and then his card being found on the bank. It just a couple of pieces are well, not I guess, I guess that, that's a good point drowning. there. I guess we forgot to add that in there. So that does make it more interesting that if his wallet was in his front pocket, like they saw him on surveillance, maybe it was possible he had a card in another pocket, but then how did the card get out unless somebody, like the opportunist that we were talking about, took the wallet out of his pocket, but then why didn't they take the card? Maybe they were just looking for cash, and then maybe one of the 
cards fell out, but that is sort of interesting. Isn't well, it? we might know that they get caught with trying to use a card, and it's not, a, right. you know, to certain people, it's not mm -hmm. going to be of any benefit. Right. You know, maybe bridge trolls. That's why I said Maybe cash. that's not to any benefit to a bridge troll. Right, that's what I was saying. So. That's why they want to just look for cash, because, um, you know, cards, you can use it, and then there's a camera probably where you used it, and it would identify you. I, I know that he wasn't, you know, he didn't have all his faculties and therefore he wasn't making the greatest choices. However, you'd have to be so stupid to walk around with your credit card and your shirt pocket. And I never, I never did feel right about that, thinking that maybe he lost it out of his shirt pocket falling down the hill. And never sat well with me. Mm -hmm. So, anyway... You have a good night. All right. You too. Thanks for calling in. All right. From Oregon. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes, from All right. Oregon. All right. See you. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye-bye. <clears throat> from Oregon. So this thing over here says, the family of Riley Strain has reportedly requested a second autopsy back in his home state of Missouri. Strain is uh, probably get Michael Biden, Baden. He, that guy can find anything. He'll... And he'll make up anything you want you to, him to say. Oh, hey, uh, yeah, I see that uh, the hyoid bone is broken. And again, everybody, say hyoid bone three times fast. And if you say you can, you're lying, all right? Just look at a mirror and call yourself a liar if you say you can say it. And I, when I say fast, I mean hyoid boy, hyoid boy, like that. Not slowly. Try to say it fast. You can't do it, all right? Thank you very much. Strain was reportedly was found wearing his shirt and watch, but was, but missing his pants and boots. His wallet was also not recovered. Yeah, that was responsible reporting because his wallet was in his pants, but they didn't say, like, re word it a different way. I spoke with two Tennessee sheriffs this afternoon. Both said it's not uncommon to find a drowning victim missing clothing. Right, exactly. We said that at the beginning. Especially in water that's known to have high currents. There you go again. Examples also given, many victims of the tragic uh, Waverly Flood were missing clothing. Some were reported missing all their clothing. The Cumberland River is known for its dangerous currents. So there you go. That might explain exactly, uh, as we were saying before, you, people were often found without items. It just seemed, it seemed like the boots... I mean, it's just when you combine it all together, it's still interesting. That might be, maybe there's something else. Because why did the police department say, uh, that's not, okay, we're interested in somebody else? So I guess that's the main thing. But uh, I guess we, I mean, this will probably be our only update for a while because I'm not going to do another show tomorrow unless there's significant breaking other news but like i told you i would do shows if there was some significant information and this seems like it's one of those shows thank you melissa sal now uh, what's a stretch who are you talking to slay rubes type in a full sentence nobody knows what you're talking about yeah it's just a night filled with trolls a lot of wacky dumb people that show up but that's okay thank you hit that like button anyways okay thank you i'm not one of those people oh good then i wasn't talking to you it's the trolls let's see yeah i mean why say no foul play then say you have a suspect right and they were saying that an hour after his body was found, they told the fa the family friend, the spokesperson, that they um, you know, we're in interested in somebody else. Right, but nobody said it was absolutely foul play, slay rubes. We're talking about the possibility of it being that now because of the information that was given out today. You must have missed the part where the family spokesperson was talking to the police and saying, hey, we're, we're talking to the guy that was up above who saw Riley Strain. They go, hey, we're not, we're, we're interested in somebody else. Why would they be interested in somebody else if there wasn't something that they were wondering about themselves? Okay, so when you say, oh, it's a stretch, 
because you're so much more knowledgeable than everybody else. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. It's not a stretch anymore. That's the thing. And I always thought it was interesting, the guy running away at 9.55 and some odd seconds, right away from underneath the same bridge that he went missing from. All right, maybe that person's related. Who the hell knows? But it definitely sure as hell isn't a stretch for somebody to think there's something more involved now given that information. It's a possibility. Now, if you want to say, what's a stretch? Is that 5% or... It, it, to me, it doesn't seem like somebody's nuts if they go, man, I think somebody might have done something to him there and people are covering it up, the, the other homeless people. Don't you think it's also weird, just like uh, I talked about earlier and when Narok called in, <laughs> Uh, don't you think, uh, I mean, what we were talking about was, isn't it strange that there's a homeless guy saying, hey, he was up there, there was some commotion going on. And the guy up there said, he's, he's drunk, don't worry about it. And then probably 15 or 20 feet away from where the homeless guy was is where Riley Strain falls off a cliff, basically, and goes into the water. Are we to believe that that guy in that same minute and a half, didn't see Riley Strain fall off of there? I mean, that's weird too, isn't it? A lot of weird stuff there. I'm sure they've seen it, Ashy Snow. I mean, they have the same video. Right. Homeless person just left him in the bush. So let's, let's go back to this again. Not that one. Is it that one? Right here. So 9.55 and 9 seconds. So literally about two minutes after Riley Strain falls off, there's this guy running right here. Now watch this. Run, 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 run. And then... Right there, slows down the walk. Isn't that what people do when you're trying to get away from the immediate danger zone and then you slow down really quick? You know how you're running, you run away and then you go, ah, okay, I think I'm far enough away, I can just walk now. And you don't wanna keep running because if you still run, then a, somebody else might notice you. So notice how they run, let's, let's look at that again, watch this. Notice how he's running, and when he's running, there are no cars around. He's probably like, oh, I gotta get the hell out of here. Okay, he's running, and so watch when he comes on here. So at this point, he started running at uh, 9.54 and some odd seconds. So here he comes, because it was, it's down the street. He's running, and notice there's no cars, but then he noticed that there were car, cars coming, then he starts walking, and he's walking slow, and then here comes a car this way, and then another one. You wouldn't want to draw attention to yourself. You know, you could look at it like that if you want to. Now, you could also look at it with some guy out for a jog who just happened to choose to slow down at that point. But, I mean, don't you think it's a little interesting, though, that he ran until there were cars coming? He saw them coming out, and then he just slows down. Like, okay, whew, I'm away from that area. And he has walked off into that good night. And when the police say they're interested in somebody else, is it that guy? Did they keep following him on camera and get a better shot of him in another location? <laughs> you watch when, the, when it comes out later. They're gonna, they'll probably say something like that. Well, we caught him on camera running away from the scene at 9. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, anyways, that's just my opinion, you guys. I think there's a chance. It's, I've always said that there's a chance that it's something. How he, how he got into the water, we don't know. But I always thought he was in the water and he floated downstream. It's just how he got in there and that the odds are strange that it's right under where a homeless encampment is, where there's people that should have saw him fall into the water but never said anything. And... There's a guy running away right from where he disappeared within two minutes after he went 
missing underneath that second bridge. So that part has always been interesting, and I've said the same thing, totally consistent with every show that I've done on it. But I don't go do the crazy, oh, some guy was wearing this shirt. Oh, look at that, there's this guy. You know, all the wild stories that people do. I don't do those ones. I never even talked about or even claimed it as a part of a show that somebody else was wearing a shirt other than somebody said that and I said, I don't think that's real. Unless you believe that somebody took his shirt off, uh, made him give him a shirt. He went up there and was seen by everybody. Hey, everybody got the shirt on. And he went back down and quickly put it back on him and then threw him into the water. There's no chance that a homeless person was wearing one of, uh, uh, or not one of, there's not a chance in the world that anybody was wearing Riley Strange's shirt other than him that night, okay? How do you know, Gray? Maybe before the party at the hotel they changed shirts for fun, you bastard. Right, but that doesn't have anything to do with the night. As a matter of fact, the, the time at the bar is irrelevant to the case. The only part that matters in the case is the last known camera footage they have of him walking underneath the second bridge. All right, you guys, don't be shy. If you want to help support the Gray Hughes Investigates YouTube channel, send in a comment with a super chat, uh, and we'll go over that comment. What we're going to do right now, however, is switch over to a different case, if that's okay. I think you guys will find that one interesting, too. Now, there's people that are only here for Riley Strain, and they're going to go seek out other Riley Strain people talking about the same thing over and over again. Or you can sit here and learn about a different one, Caleb Harris, which is actually sort of technically more interesting. You know, There's even, a surveil there's even surveillance footage in that one. Look at that, Juju positive. Thank you. I think I'm gonna, now I'm gonna have to give the five memberships. So here we go. Gonna do it. Man, so who got him there? Hey, by the way, if you're out there, hit that subscribe button for me, I'd appreciate it. Trying to get to the 127,000 number. Believe it or not, there's 127,000 people out there that subscribe to a person like me. A mean, nasty curmudgeon. <laughs> oh, shit. Man, if you go, if you go read the comments underneath the... Uh, some of these, uh, <laughs> like, every time I appear on a show, it doesn't matter what show it's, it is, the trolls come from miles. It's almost like a, 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 somebody says, hey, and then they come in, and they go on, they make these comments. Gray's one of the meanest people on the planet. One time when I was... Okay, everyone wants to hear your story. Yeah. Let's see, where is the, oh yeah, I was going to do a uh, gifted membership here. Right here. <laughs> Don't you guys love the, the whiny voice? <laughs> My name is... Yeah. All right, uh, here we go. And thanks a lot, Juju Positive. That was very kind of you, very kind. Here we go. Thanks, Richard Watts. And there we go. Five more. There we go. Uh, well, let me do um, 
Juju Positives, welcome to Dreaming of Blue Skies and Sandy Beaches, who I thought was already a member. And then Mr. Monk, love that show. Jan, I used to watch the Brady Bunch all the time. Uh, Woody Wood, used to watch uh, the cartoons. Now, Deanna May, no, you didn't get one. You already had one. Uh, it was Wild Yet Still Today. <laughs> uh, Amethyst Kingdom. Sweet cry, uh, sweet crazy. Cindy, Cheradubi. Always reminds me of Scooby Doo. And Seven Beauties. Then mine resulted in. Let's see. Oh yeah, mine was a uh, Youper Girl. Critter, little, critter lover Jesse, JB, KT. And Gray Gray? <laughs> what the hell is that? Who's Gray Gray? Oh my God, uh, do I have a stalker here? I mean, their name is Gray Gray, everybody. Did you guys see that? Holy moly. Anyways, there you go. You bet. Gray Gray. <laughs> I am. Not a stalker. It's my name too. Oh, come on. That isn't your name. How could your name be Gray Gray? Hey, that's just, uh, that's wild. Your first name is Gray and your last name is Gray? Or you're just like Gray Gray? Like, I don't know. That's just odd. But welcome anyways, you know. Or, or maybe you can explain the story to me. I want to hear this. No, oh, it's your last name, but then you just made Gray your first name? Hmm. <laughs> That's pretty funny. All right, well, cool. You should be, like, uh, around here all the time, then. Hey, welcome, Connie, my one flipping wife. I thought you just got one given to you. No, no. Never mind. I'm, I'm confused. All right, we're switching now. Here we go. I'm going to turn off the Skype number. And because you know, so many of you were just calling in, it was getting, I couldn't even control it. Okay. All right, here we go. It's going to be good. I guess what we could do is take a look at a couple of the earlier art, the early on articles here. So, got one from the 11th here. Investigators continue to search for 21 year old Caleb Harris. Police say the Texas A&M University Corpus Christi student went missing on March 4th. He was last seen near his apartment on Ennis Jocelyn Road near SPID. Ex uh, Ennis Jocelyn Road. Yeah, I think, let me, let me just put that in there. Yeah, okay. That's Ennis, okay, that's right, right outside his, okay, got it. I want to make sure. Uh, exactly one week since the disappearance of 21-year-old Caleb Harris, law enforcement has not provided any new updates to the investigation. However, they said they are continuously working to find more details that can lead to finding Harris. The Texas A&M University Corpus Christi student was last seen on March 4th around 3 a.m. near his apartment on Ennis Jocelyn Road and South Padre Island Drive. Uh, by Wednesday morning, Corpus Christi Police, Texas Search, uh, Texas Search and Rescue, and the Coast Guard worked together to conduct the search. We're using 
the cadets that we have currently in the academy to physically get their boots on the ground and canvas the adjacent fields, etc. Uh, Smith has covered investigation for 20 years. He said there is a specific process when it comes to investigations. Uh, anyways, the rest of it's just kind of random. So we do that one. Let's go to let's check out another one on Fox News. See, so these are the parents. Maybe we can listen to some of them. Listen to the, both Came of them. Home, some of these interviews. Is roommate like got a new dog, and so they, uh, you know, from say ten on, they were playing with the dog, and um, you know we've got. You know, we do have some video of them playing with the dog because they uh, been missing sent for us a while. video of the dog. Adrian. Sent us pictures of the dog. Uh, my son was also a big fisherman, so he was he would always swap, you know, fishing ideas and different lures to use. And he was um, preparing in the next afternoon. Uh, he had ordered um, from a convenience store his lunch for the next day, which is very normal, very normal. He's a creature of habit, very normal. Uh, for him to do I have that. all this information. We got some uh, different chats and uh, Snapchats and stuff. All about 2.58 is when his phone um, either was turned off or quit working. Uh, but he, must he had taken the dog off. out for a walk and was waiting for his Uber Eats to show up at the front door and uh, put the dog back in. And then, you know, we just didn't see him. Did. I mean, the biggest mm -hmm. thing is that he was preparing, you know, preparing for school, preparing for fishing, preparing, you know, New lease on his apartment. Um, A.M. All kinds of things of things that he's, you know, getting ready to do. Going to Alaska this summer to work. Um, just a lot of uh, preparedness. Uh, the, you know, he was doing, and uh, that kind of led up to that. It's like any other college-oriented apartment complex. It, it uh, it's real close to the school. It's not a a school complex, but it most. Most of the residents are kids, and, and even within uh, across the street and around his his apartment are are kids that he, he knows or either grew up. He, he kind of vanished. There's no there's no um, there's no evidence of wrongdoing, but there's no evidence at all. And so it's a it's a matter of of looking at every inch, every everything we could possibly think of that the police were thinking of and you know we were constantly getting uh texts that we forward and so there's a lot of things that we're doing in the background uh, yeah so that's that's that one with some, some so they're just kind of looking around this is on the 12th not a lot of information uh, let's see i'll skip to the one with the 13th the next day dad of missing new bronfeld student uh what can i do here I guess I can't do that one. <laughs> okay. Uh, what this one? People magazine. Search for Texas A&M Corpus Christi student expands one week after his disappearance. A mystery. Caleb Harris, 21, disappeared on March 4th outside his apartment complex. The second year Texas A&M University Corpus Christi student picked up an Uber Eats order but then vanished so that's not true there he never picked up an uber, uber eats he ordered an uber eats hundreds of volunteers in the u.s coast guard are now taking part all right uh let me just skip it forward to like the 21st a timeline of new brunfeld's caleb harris disappearance search efforts Uh, it's been three weeks since New Brunsville, or Bronfell's residence and college student Caleb Harris vanished from Corpus Christi. Authorities are now taking a new direction in search of the missing 21-year-old man, expanding their efforts to San Antonio. Okay, so there's a 1900 block of Ennis Road. His family reported him missing after his roommates were unable to locate him the next day. He is described as being 5'11", 180 pounds. He has brown hair and brown eyes. On March 6th, Corpus Christi Police Department originally, uh, originally issued a search party of, for Harris where he was last spotted in Ennis. Um, following leads, the Corpus Christi Police Department issued a statement. 
reassuring the public that they are continually searching for Harris despite their lack of updates. Now, the family plead for information. All right, so there, then there was this um, surveillance footage that came out. Well, let, let's just let's just go straight to my notes, okay? Because uh, now let's just you kind of get it. Like, there's this kid that's missing. He, he was just in his apartment. But let me read this. So Caleb's father, um, in an interview, this was on. You know, Nancy Grace, I just took notes off of it. She said, he said, March 4th, he texted his son in the morning. You know, they were just talking about fishing and stuff. And then on the 5th is when the roommates called and said he's missing. He was a junior. He was in, in uh, studying environmental science. He loves fishing and hunting. He loves all, you know, clothing, etc. He wants to be sponsored. He was looking to be a kayak guide, get a, gui a kayak guide license to help people figure out what they need to put on their kayak, etc. And then it was uh, worked in Colorado. He was going to work this next summer coming up in Colorado. And he was a like a, a serious fisherman, methodical about it, like really trying to you know, use exactly the right gear for each specific species, etc. Um, and he was actually ready to go fishing on the 5th, the day that he went missing. He was going to go fishing later in the day. And he did say that the roommates' hearts are broken. They all grew up together since 4th grade. So it's kind of hard to sort of, you know, this is one of those weird ones, man. This is a weird case. All right, so, so here we go. At 11.53, there's a picture... Uh, of a dog that he sent to his mom and uncle. Like he's got this new puppy they have. I don't know if it's his or what, but there's a puppy. And then at 1 o'clock in the morning, so about an hour later, he uh, Harris he's seen on ring doorbell camera. And so that would be in this video right here. At this show, too. If I can get it over there. So here it is. So that's him right here. And it says approximately 1 a.m. Oh, this says March 4th. So it must have been March 4th is when uh, the roommates called it in. It must have been the 3rd when he talked to his dad. So that's him right there. But it's weird how they're like, but all everybody's looking at the surveillance camera. Like, why does he look at the surveillance camera? And then why does this guy look at the surveillance camera? I mean, is it like really sticking out in their face? Look at that guy. I looked at it too. Man. Then they walked that way. And this is in front of their his apartment. And here's where he, this, these are the apartments. So it's kind of like, you know, could have been right here even. The way that looked. Right there. So he lived in these apartments. Uh, the cottages. And at Corpus Christi here. And I know we're doing a new case, everybody, but if you're out there and you can help support the Grady's Investigates channel so we can flow into the end of the month on a roll and kick some ass on the giveaway part portion, that'd be great. Thank you very much. All right, so these are the cottages. We're having one of those lull periods again. All right, let's see. Let me, let's play that again. So, I mean, it, you know, you already saw that. So let me read through this. Uh, so 1 a.m., Harris is on the ring doorbell camera. Then at 2 a.m., uh, his roommate goes to sleep on the couch. And Caleb is awake preparing for his fishing trip. So his roommate must remember, oh, yeah, when I fell asleep, he was just getting his poles and everything together. Then at 2.44 a.m., Harris takes his dog for a walk in the complex. Or takes the dog for a walk. I don't know if it's his or not. But he takes the dog. He goes outside and takes the dog for a walk in the complex. And he also Snapchats his sister. New case found? What do you mean? Oh, new case fund. <laughs> hey, thanks, Mahal 457 Rose. Yeah, new case fund, everybody. Yay! Yeah, it was the guy in the front there. Yeah. Anyways, um, so it was... Um, 
Caleb awake, preparing for his fishing trip. And then at 2.44, Harris takes a dog for a walk in the complex, and he Snapchats his sister. No, that's, that can't be his. They said he's the guy, the second guy? This guy right here? That doesn't even look like him. So you're saying his parents said the guy with the teal shirt's him? Man, that's hard to believe. This guy, the guy right there with the hat looks just like what you think he looked like. Okay, well, I mean, wh whatever it is, let's just, I mean, the, the video itself isn't really, there's nothing nefarious in it. So one of these three kids, let's just say that's him. Doesn't really look like the guy that I was looking at, but. Yeah, I think it's this guy right here, not this person. I don't know who, but you're, somebody up above said the parents said the guy in the teal shirt was him. Huh? What? Oh, yeah, the teal pants. Okay, yeah. All right. Yeah, that's him right here, right? This guy. I mean, I, that, that, this person here looks like him. Not this guy, and it's not this guy. It's the guy right here with the yellow hat, the white shirt, and the teal pants, right? And I don't want anybody going, well, that's not really white, gray. It's really kind of a, yeah, it's just, it doesn't really even matter that much, to be honest with you. I just want to get through the notes if I can, you know? It could have been any one of those three. It doesn't really matter. They're all just outside. Anyways, it goes, um, let's see. 244, Harris takes the dog for a walk in the complex, and then he also Snapchats to his sister. And then at 245, just one minute later, he orders his Uber Eats, and he ordered two Lunchables, a Red Bull, and apple pie and the father said yeah it's exactly typical of him so very likely he ordered that because he's actually walking the dog you see him on surveillance camera apparently walking the dog they haven't released that one at 244 and then 245 he's or he orders the um uber eats and then at 258 13 minutes after that his phone so he must have brought the dog back inside. And then, see, that's where it gets sort of interesting because then his phone turns off or dies. Um, I'm not sure how they can absolutely tell that without having the phone. I mean, could it just be that it was in a place for a moment where it just didn't have any connection? Hey, thanks, Mel Bell. Uh, 258, my, uh, his phone at a.m., his phone turns off or dies. Then at 3.03 a.m., a Snapchat, he sent a Snapchat to a friend, and he's near the bridge over a drainage ditch, And but the dog was back. See, it was funny again. Since I was watching Nancy Grace again, and every question that I had follow-up, I had to cross out later because it was answered and then filled in you know, what she said. I wanted to know, did he, where's the dog? Well, he brought it back inside. Then there was another thing. Um, and then there was another ping at 312, but law enforcement doesn't believe that's a valid ping in the area, so they just kind of, that one's discounted. And then at 320, an Uber Eats uh, delivered the food. It was a young lady, and she's been cleared. She doesn't see Caleb at all, but sees another vehicle leaving the parking lot. The person leaving was located and determined not to be involved. The person lives in San Antonio and was visiting his girlfriend. He believed not to be involved. He actually saw the Uber Eats driver enter the complex, too. So there's nobody there. What does... Just hang up, just get, delete people like that from the channel. They're not even, they're just trolls, <laughs> okay? People that type stuff like that in, yeah. Let's see, uh, apartment searched early on to determine if he left willingly. So they looked in the apartment right away because they wanted to see if something bad happened in there and they didn't find anything. 
and then law enforcement is wondering why he left on foot on an extremely foggy night. I didn't hear anybody talk about how he was barefoot, though. Everybody talks about that. But where do we see this thing where he didn't have any shoes on? You know? So basically, it's like, this, this is where, um, let's see, where is the, right there. So I think it's right here is the canal that he was, he's next to. And then there's a picture even. It's right, yeah, that's definitely it. Right here. See how that's got that curved edge right there that goes across. I think this might even be what he sent on Snapchat right here. Like this image right here. And he took that picture from right there. So he would have been standing in the grass or maybe on the path if he was right there. Let's see. Does that make sense? Yeah, he's on the path there. Looks like he's standing right over here. Took that picture and then he disappears. Now people wonder if he's in, you know, did he go in the canal? But the canal wasn't quick that day. And it's sort of, it's shallow. And wouldn't that, wouldn't he be really easy to find if he'd gone into this canal here? I mean, I don't know what it does right here. I mean, man, maybe it shoots underneath the city in there. And by the way, which way does it flow? Uh, it might even flow the other direction. So let's see if it went. Hmm. Looks like it just disappears again out underneath the ground. Doesn't really. Oh, there it goes right into here. So it probably flows out this way. And that would take him into the, uh, almost into the ocean, really. Well, in these little bays and then eventually. So he'd be somewhere around in there. It's just, it's really wild though, because he has no, he had nothing to like take his own life for. He had like, I think he had a girlfriend. Uh, he had a job lined up for the summer. He was going to go fishing later this day. You know, spent time picking out the fishing gear, etc. And he's out walking the dog. He looked totally normal, right? He's outside with the dog the one time that he went on a do walk with the dog. I would like to know what the was said in the um like the what was it three three o three snapchat to a friend I mean he does just he sends that picture the dog was already back in, and then that was the bridge, and he sent that snapchat on the bridge in that exact spot right here. So he's over there, and then, I mean, it is kind of a, like if he was drunk or something, it'd be like Riley Strain, he'd fall in, but are you really going to die into that? I mean, that's just, that doesn't make any sense, does it? So this is one of those weird cases where somebody just disappears. This seems like the most logical thing, because he's right there. They don't believe the 312 ping, and then at 320, the Uber shows up with the food, and he never got back to the place to get the food. And the roommates didn't find the food until the next morning because they were all sleeping. Yeah, he's, a, he's been in college for two and a half years. So a junior. So what do you guys think of this? Two forty-four. He's just walking around with the dog. I mean, it seems most logical that somehow he went into the the canal here, but it wasn't a day where the water was moving quickly. No, there's no survey. I showed you all, all I got. Yeah, it's, I think it's a screenshot of the Snapchat. Yeah. Yeah. Like he's heading there. I mean, I'm not sure. I think he's like, oh, look how, because it was really foggy that night. So maybe that was something he thought was interesting. Wait, let me look at this. Something doesn't work here on the... It looks like that bridge, but is it over here? 
Wow. That's kind of weird. That's over here. <laughs> that, that makes that more interesting. Like it's over here. See, I'm glad I'm, I do this stuff. I think. Yeah, I mean, let me, let me take a look at this one again. Hold on. Well, I guess it could be this one. No, that's, that works. It's right there. I was looking at the wrong... Yeah, see, look. So it's kind of like, about like that. See? See that right there? So that's the spot. And somehow, right after this time, he disappears. But man, I mean, you can't really... The way they describe the water here... It'd be, it would be very difficult to drown. And the water is flowing this way. There wasn't, uh, uh, during rains, there's a lot of flow to it, but it wasn't like that. And, I mean, if they checked, I mean, obviously you'd think they would check in all these places here, right? Inside of this forested area. Yeah, I mean, if, it, if it's something like that, shadow aspect and there's probably no way to solve the case and unfortunately the surveillance footage uh, also s pulled to us by the police was um, very uh, it was foggy so it didn't work the way they needed to seems kind of weird to like hit somebody and then put their body in your car and then drive it somewhere to dump it Especially a, a person that would weigh quite a bit. You think maybe you slipped into the water? Yeah. Well, tell you what, I'm going to open up the uh, lines again on this case and let's see what you guys come up with. So I just gave you all the main factual pieces of information. I mean, you sort of, you think about stuff like, all right, so is that text message fake? You know, did something happen to him when he went back to the apartment to drop the dog off? How do we know that was really him at 303 that sent the, the message at the bridge? Was that to make it seem, it wasn't a picture of himself, it was a picture of the bridge. So was that meant to make it look like he was still alive at that point? You know, that's a that's the conspiracy theory that you could come up with. No, but that ping they discounted on the the police department said that they don't believe that that is. Well, it what I guess what's interesting about it is it must have connected somehow to a network at three twelve. But they don't think that that was accurate. They said that on Nancy Grace in the interview. What do you mean they're focusing on? They, they just had a lead in San Antonio originally. So when you say remember, the cops are focusing on San Antonio. So they're focusing on the place that the guy that was in the car came from? Well, right, right. Obviously, Gray Gray, yeah. Don't need to say it out loud, you know. Yeah. I think they when when were they focused on San Antonio? Is that now? Are you sure? Because uh, it seems like they aren't anymore. Uh, I don't think so, Michael. Uh, let's see, the canal, they said, was not even a foot deep. Now somebody says Nevada. Jesus, you guys. Yeah. yeah, it's like the phone went, oh, maybe you live in Nevada. You came and started watching the show late. <laughs> the person who sent the Snapchat of the bridge who lives in San Antonio. Okay. All right. Well, that's, uh, I mean, that would make that interesting.
the person he sent the Snapchat to the bridge to lives in San Antonio. Hmm. Huh. Well, I guess we'll see. Yeah, isn't that weird? New World. Wonder if there has been any similar disappearance in the past. I don't know. He got hit by the kid and then got put in the trunk and took off. Really? Why, why, would, why would he do that? So he came to visit him and then the friend pretended to send a text to him that would land on a phone in his own pocket sitting right there? That doesn't really make a lot of sense. I had a man in daylight pull up near me at a gas pump. Kept saying, come near, I have a ring and you can have it. I said no, kept insisting and I seen or saw, should be, uh, a shadow of two people in back seat tinted window. Well, so I told you that car pulled up next to me when I was a kid. Told me to get in. There was a couple people in there. Maybe three it seemed like. New world when there is no logical explanation anymore. It's aliens. Exactly. I don't know. I thought I heard you say the cops were... No, I didn't say that. I said that uh, there was a guy in San Antonio that... Um, you know, that's where the guy lived that was in the apartment complex. Oh, I guess that makes somewhat some sense what you're saying. The guy in San Antonio was visiting his girlfriend, and he, but he left at like 3.30, though. And he saw the Uber Eats person pull in, and then he drove out. Right, so I guess you could say maybe when he left, he hit somebody, and then he put him in his trunk. <laughs> I mean that that's getting kind of yeah. Like, what are the odds of that? And why was he outside so long from three o three to three thirty in the cold fog? If it was a homicide. His father said he was the type of guy that would help anyone. Yeah. Okay. And the Uber Eats girl never saw him. Yeah, she never saw him. So that that's that makes that sort of interesting too, right? Because that means she might not have known what he looked like either, and maybe just wasn't paying attention. Oh yeah, I saw this guy, but you know, you're it's foggy out. But yeah, so when she got there at five thirty. That means there's a window between 3.03 and, or 3.20 she got there. So like 3.18 she drives by and he's not there anymore. So he disappeared right off the, out of that area. Yeah, I know. We got over that, Casey. We spent a whole time going over it. I'll go over the timeline again. Because people seem like they just show up and they want to be the experts. So here it is, 11.53 p.m., there's a picture of dog uh, that he sent to his mom and uncle, so that lo little puppy. Then at 11 a.m., Harris is on ring doorbell camera. And that's this one right here. This guy right here with the yellow hat on. He's walking out. There's a little puppy. Yeah, it probably is a person because they're kind of la smiling at the person over here. And they walk back in with the puppy. You know, they've known each other since fourth grade. Hey, there he is. All right, that was 1 a.m. Then at 2 a.m., one of his roommates said that he went to sleep on the couch, meaning himself, the, the roommate. But Caleb was obviously still awake because he said he was preparing for his fishing trip the next day. Then at 2.44 a.m., 45 minutes later, um, or 44 if you want to get technical, Harris takes that same dog outside for a walk in the complex. So he's just kind of walking around in the complex, walking the dog around. Then one minute into that walk, he orders Uber Eats. And what he ordered were two Lunchables, a Red Bull, 
and an apple pie, which is absolutely consistent with what something, uh, something that he would order according to his dad. It was typical of him to order food like that. Then at 2.58, his phone somehow, they believe, turns off or dies. But then it's interesting that at 3.03, he sends a Snapchat. So he obviously turned his phone back on again, or at least now it's got service or something. Um, so 3.03 a.m., a Snapchat to a friend, and he sent that Snapchat. That's that image that I showed you. That's this one right here which is right there next to this bridge. He's walking like he's on, he must have a really wide angle lens, but he's basically standing in the picture. He's right here. And it's cutting out, you know, it's like this part, like you can't see the grass. It's just right there. So that's at uh, two or three o three, and the dog was back in the apartment at this time. So he, I mean, it's interesting. He's walking the dog, and then he orders his Uber Eats. So there must be a time in between two forty five and two fifty eight, or three o three is what you can say. Two two forty five and three o three that he brought the dog back inside the apartment. And actually, I would say way before that because it would be like 2.45, let's just say the 2.58 when his phone turned off. Because then five minutes later, he's back outside again because his phone is taking a picture. And I'm saying that specifically because we don't know who actually took that photograph of the bridge, right? So it's at 3.03 a.m., his phone takes a picture of the bridge over that drainage ditch and the dog was already back in the apartment. Then at 3.12 a.m., the phone pings on Williams Drive, but law enforcement doesn't believe it's a valid ping. Let's see where that is. Like, it wasn't a, a valid locational ping. Ah, forget it. There is a Williams Drive right here. Okay, well, Williams Drive goes to here. So that's sort of interesting if the water flows that direction <laughs> because then it would be like he goes in there and then it goes right underneath Williams Drive right there. Is there any way to tell? I mean, I, I would think everything flows back out to the ocean, but it could be that it comes in and flows in like that. What do you guys think? Does anybody know what direction these flow here? I don't know where his door is. Yeah, I know it goes into the bay. Yeah, we went over that earlier. So anyways, they don't think this is a valid ping here. And if it flows this way, I mean, that doesn't even make sense. And then at 3.20, the Uber Eats is delivered, the one that he ordered at 2.45, that's pretty slow for Uber Eats, isn't it? And she doesn't see Caleb at all. He doesn't, you know, and he doesn't respond or whatever and just leaves it at the door. I don't know if that's just what they do is just leave it at the door. And let's see. And then, but she does see another vehicle leaving the parking lot. However, the police did locate the person leaving the parking lot. And he, was, he lives in San Antonio. And But he was just there visiting his girlfriend and had to leave to get back for his school. And then he's believed, not, he's believed not to be involved. He actually saw the Uber Eats driver. He said, yeah, I saw the Uber Eats driver come in. You know, he didn't say that. He just saw the vehicle coming in. And law enforcement believes that's the Uber Eats driver that he saw. They searched the apartment complex or his apartment early on to see if there was any evidence of foul play inside of his apartment. They didn't find anything. But they are wondering why he left on foot on such an extremely foggy night. I mean, was it... <laughs> I mean, you got to admit, this is one of those weird ones, right? Because 
There's no evidence at all that he had any mental, you know, thoughts at all of, of killing himself or anything, right? None of that. Yeah. It's very weird. Yeah, this is one of those ones where it's like, um, I mean, the most obvious glaring thing is that he's right next to this canal, right? That's what, you know. Just sort of like, oh yeah, well there he is. He's right next to a canal, right at 3:03, and then probably within a eight ten minute window there he d disappears. Well, you know, I'd like to know what why he was sending a picture of that bridge at 3:03 though, and specifically to that friend. Was it just to show how foggy it was? I mean, because that does show you, like, man, that is foggy as hell there, right? kind of cool look it's kind of a neat photograph as well I mean artistically oh, yeah, I guess it would help if the number so there you go anybody want to call in with thoughts on this one anybody at all I got nothing. Yeah. Maybe you saw something in the water or was exploring while drunk. <coughs> Maybe. And he just falls into really shallow water and water that's not even moving fast and somehow, you know, falls in and gets carried out to an ocean. I mean, I don't know. Just nothing makes sense here. You can see how shallow the water is just by looking at that picture. Yeah, I mean, most college kids have beers at night. Don't know if he was drinking, though. This is February of 2023. See, that looks higher than how he, how it is on this day. Let's go back. See the bank over there? Look how high that looks like the water right here. Or maybe that's, I can't tell. That looks like the water's down here, doesn't it? And that's just this huge wall there. Like it's really low. Now, it's possible, I guess, that that's, uh, the water's up here and that's a reflection or something, but I don't think so. I think that uh, that's a shadow underneath the bridge. That's the wall. It's way down there. This one here is, I mean, you look at this, and that's way higher in February. Did he, what? Did he send any text with the picture? I don't know. I don't know, don't have the answer. Maybe that's what they're keeping from people. Oh my God. He didn't go fishing at 3.03. Good Lord. It's the cottages. Knock yourself out. Hey, thanks, wise child. Are you are you trying to break the massive lull that we've had again? Man, this should be one of those nights where you make up for some of these other ones and better than the last one. So we're gonna have to get rid of the gray. Gray, you're gonna have to change your name on here because when people tag. I want when somebody types in at gray that they're talking to me. Gosh, gray, that's really mean. I mean, what if the guy had the... People live in hot places, frequently walk around barefoot. Sure. 
and you can't see anything in that picture he may have been targeting what he wasn't targeting anything yeah sure if you send in uh, super chats Heidi sure we can get those in at first glance I see a car may have st stricken him due to fog panicked then dumped body later what was the temp that night uh, ah I guess we could check that out what was the temperature in Corpus Christi on March 4th Hey, thanks, Patricia Donahue. Oh, yeah, so it's warm over there. Jeez. So 3 a.m. it's 72. Yeah, 71 degrees. And then it got up to... 81 at noon on the 4th. I mean, let's just check the 5th just in case we're... I mean, yeah, so it's always like 70 degrees is about the lowest it ever gets. So, yeah, definitely you could wear no shoes outside. It's foggy. I don't know. I, I think the question the, uh, the police are asking that why would somebody be walking outside... On a foggy night, that's weird. Why? How come? It's not weird at all. It's just, it's just somebody walking, right outside their car, apartment complex. I don't think it's weird. Doesn't feel weird to me. It could be alligators in there. But yes, I'll I'll show you Blue and Chloe. There they are. There's Blue. He's doing good. They're not looking this way though. Unfortunately. Well, anybody want to call in on this one or what? If not, we, I'm just going to make it a shorter show. I mean, it's, last night was four hours and my neck's not doing too good after that, so... Yeah, I doubt there's an alligator there. I know, are you just going to pick the body up and, uh, and put it in your trunk and drive away? Yeah. Uh, investigators mentioned gators at all? No. It's weird that his phone went off and came back on. Yeah, I don't know how they can determine that his phone went off without having the phone. I mean, I can see if it's not connected to the network, does that really mean it's off? Or was it somewhere for a moment where it just lost contact with everything? I mean, maybe if you say that it, it's not even doing GPS, that would be kind of weird, I guess. Well, you guys, I think that's going to do it for me tonight. I appreciate you being here and hanging out, going over these cases. Thank you all for supporting the channel. I hope you guys think, I mean, this is a total mystery right here. I hope they get have some more information, specific GPS location, because they have the FBI working with them and everything. I mean, this isn't some minor league operation. They got them all. Now, they didn't really try. Nancy Grace interrupted people right when they were about to say something good, <laughs> like twice, 
drove me nuts. Like they were literally in the middle of like, oh yeah. Now here's what I want to say. No, wait, 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 hold on. Now are you saying that the, the phone pinged out, and they never get back to whatever that was. It's like God. I mean, I interrupt too when, I, but I usually just do it when I'm trying to talk, and then the other person just starts talking over me, like just endlessly. So that happens on here. All right. Well, thank you to Lori, Callie Gal 3, Callie Gal 3. I mean, we started off so great, and then it just piddled off on the show. Mark Willis, and then Kim Christian, uh, Cyrus Stewart, Tumbleweed, Peeps, Eugenie, TCR, Naomi McFarlane. Lisa Mounts, Mama She 13, Kevin Moley, Ash, uh, Ashy Snow, January JOP, Emily Flotilla, Never Illa, Emily Flotilla again, Van Hawk, or Hauk, Amber Maiden, Connie, My One Flipping Life, Kylie, Heather N, Emily Flotilla. Uh, thanks for everybody who gifted memberships out tonight. Very kind. Emily Flotilla, Amber Maiden, and Lisa Mounts all get to the membership. Then Ally Cake, Linda Dees, Michelle H., Lee Baker, Kathy Frydenmaker, Chris Cress, Chris Cress will make you jump, jump. <laughs> I like that song, actually. <laughs> it's the only thing, you know, it's the only one that they did that was worth a damn. Viv Photography, Mama She 13 gifted five memberships. Then Mama She 13, Super Chat. Then Brown Eyed Girl 714, a new member. Brown Eyed Girl 714. Then Melissa South, Melissa South. Ashy Snow, Juju Positive, gifted 10 freaking memberships. Then I gifted five memberships. So, in fact, I thanked myself a minute ago. Sorry about that. Gray, you always thank yourself, you bastard. And then uh, Connie, my one flipping life, a new member. Mama 457 Rose, simply me. Mel Bell, LPS Dragon Studios, Wise Child, and Patricia M. Donahue. Man, you guys, right now we're at 297.72. Is there anybody that wants to get that, just tidy that up a bit? 297.72. It's kind of. You know, it's just not, it's not settling right. You know what I'm saying? Sunset, uh, a lot more about puppy. Well, we're, it, he just dropped the puppy off, you know? I mean, something happened in between, like I said before, 303 and 320. That's it. Or actually, you actually say 245, 245, and if you believe that's him texting at 303, but in reality, there's the window is 245 to 320, because he's not home. If you, if you consider that maybe the cell phone image was not done by him, but if it is him, then... He obviously dropped off the dog between 245 and 303, and now he's back out active again, and something happened to him between 303 and 320. Hey, thanks, Kim Christian and Emily Flotilla. Namaste. All right, there we go. We made it. And they were right there at the end. Let me see the bottom here. And check uh, email. Oh, thank you to, uh, let's see, Christy. Got a whole bunch of emails that came in. I uh, have to check those out later. Man, it's like I spend a lot of time just reading emails. I mean, people, like, go out of their way to write me these novels. Like, great, great, I've got these, I got these thoughts. Let me, let me write them down for you. I have to literally copy them and paste them into a reading software program 
so that they can, they can play like a podcast <laughs> while I'm over doing some work, okay? I mean, it's I don't mind. Like, I, I appreciate that you took the time, I guess, but it's like, come on. I mean, you know, I, I'm really busy doing this stuff. Well, see, though, that's just wild speculation, wondering if it's somebody with a car trouble, because we don't have any... There's no information stating that at all, you know. So what we know is that if you believe that the the um, Snapchat or whatever the hell that was that he sent at uh, 3.03 is him, then he went missing between 3.03 and 3.20. Or actually probably, you know, 3.19. He went missing right inside that window. If you don't believe that that's him, and some other person, nefarious, maybe they're walking away with his phone right at that moment. And it's, he was put somewhere else, in, in a car or something. Then you go from 245 to 320, which makes it a 55-minute window. But I think it was him sending that message at 303. Don't you? Yeah. All right. Well, anyways, thank you guys very much. Um, oh, and thank you up there to Mama, Mama Four Fifty Seven Rose. Oh, and you gifted five more. Jesus, what happened? Patricia Donahue and then No For Show gifted five memberships. Welcome to, let's see, Even Steven, Gay Smith, Mary Moody, KK Nichols, and I don't know how to say that name. Like some big something or other but anyways uh yeah and i appreciate all you know the freaks are always so generous giving out memberships so it's pretty cool maybe some of you will stick around after the membership runs out you can choose the one dollar and 99 cent option well we don't it doesn't depend on that tegan uh, it just means I, we'd like to know what was in the message to see what state of mind he was in or, you know, what was said. Is, that, would that lead to anything? You know, but if, if you notice, nobody ever asks those kind of questions in, in the interviews. Like, well, what did he say along with the image that he sent? Right. Anyways, I hope you guys found that interesting tonight. I thought it was... Uh, you know, pretty interesting night all around. I mean, it sounds like the Riley Strain case, that there's a, a possibility that the door is open, that something else happened to him, given the fact that is, he's, you know, I mean, ha having no clothing on doesn't mean something nefarious happened, but, you know, when you combine, he didn't have, when I say no clothing, I mean his pants and his boots, he had a shirt on, and he had his watch on. We don't know about the socks or the underwear. We don't know about that. And that also he had no water in his lungs and only about 10% of drowning people at maximum don't have water in their lungs. And then we also see the guy running away at uh, 9.55 from, the, from underneath bridge number two there. And then the spokesperson for the family says that uh, when they told the police that they were talking to somebody they were interested in, they said, oh, we, we don't think he has anything to do with it. We're interested in somebody else. Well, all those things combined make it seem like they too might think there's something else going on. Then this case here is crazy where Caleb Harris is just chilling out 11, 1157 or so. He's sending text messages to his family and his uncle is, you know, hey, look at my dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then at 1 o'clock, he's outside with the dog uh, in the parking lot with his two roommates. And they just bring the dog back up. Everything's fine. Then at 2 o'clock in the morning, his, I'm just doing this by memory now. His 2 o'clock in the morning, his roommates are uh, basically uh, asleep. One of them's on the couch, I guess. And the roommate noticed that Caleb was getting his fishing gear ready for tomorrow because he's supposed to go fishing. 
and then at 244 he is um, out he's walking his dog in the apartment complex and then at 245 he sends a like a I think it was a was a snapchat to a friend but it's right down by this canal here well that wasn't that no at 245 he sends what did he send at 245 that wasn't right right there 245 he orders his food that's right so 244 he takes his dog on a walk then 245 he orders the uber eats two lunchables a red bull and an apple pie then at 258 apparently his phone like dies right we don't really know what that means and then 303 he's taking a snapchat right here by this canal he's right there and he ordered that uber eats at 245 uh, and then the del delivery came in at 320 she gets to the door and drops off his food and he's nowhere to be found ever again like 303 the that one photo that he takes of the canal is the everything is in the a.m. here the only thing that wasn't was the 11:53 p.m. messaging pictures of his dog we've gone over it a hundred times already you should already know that so the um, yeah 303 it's only a picture of a bridge there's no really picture of him at that time if you believe that's him, the windows between 303 and 320 when the Uber get, person got there. If you uh, don't believe it's him, then you windows from 245 and then you go back to the point where he brought the dog into the house. See, that's the thing is he brings the dog back into the house. That means he's near his roommates. They've checked the house. They didn't find anything going on there. So it's very likely that he did drop off the dog. And then for some unknown reason, though, he goes back outside. That's the part I would look at like, not like, wow, why did a guy go walking in the fog? That doesn't mean anything. It's why did he go back outside at 245-ish, 247, two, no, uh, two, probably like 258, right around there. Whatever his phone went off, something around that time, he goes outside. What made him go outside near the canal during that time? <laughs> okay uh, sorry if you're just tuning in but man you're just tuning in right I was already supposed to be off the air but I just did a recap it's okay Miss Tandy don't worry about it uh, he has a he had class that day and was up at three yeah college students stay up all the time man uh, <laughs> you know I used to go to have a class and stay up till three and then go to class in the morning sometimes skip the class you know it was, you know, it's college for God's sakes. Who heard something splash, Miss Tandy? Come on, I mean, please, let's, come on. Um, dog poo idea? He went back out to pick up dog crap? Is that what the idea is? <laughs> Okay, uh, we've jumped the shark, everybody. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. Do some thinking on this. Maybe we'll have a chat for a while on it again. Maybe get some other information. Who knows? But that will just about do it. Thank you all for your generosity and supporting the channel. We'll see you guys tomorrow. And as I always say, until next time, be safe out there. And a one, and a two, and a three, and a four, and a five, and a six, and a seven. And an eight, yeah, and a nine, and a ten, and an eleven, and a twelve, and, and a thirteen, and a fourteen, and a fifteen. And <laughs> what? That is a crime dissector, a threat ejector. I'm a certified human lie detector. I'm gonna get ya on a stretcher. You can try and play me like a low projector. Crime sector is my nectar. Professor Gray is gonna give another lecture. Crime collector. Freak connector, and I'm always gonna be a pop detector, fool deflector, interceptor, and I'm even a little specter with a vector on his pector with all respect, y'all. Just remember, I have a temple fucking check, y'all. What about me? What about you, Emily? Touch me. She likes me better than you. I'm gonna send you straight without the blender, and in the end, I'm gonna send you on a mission to reveal the true offender. 
You know, that wasn't yeah, very so nice, right Mary Lou. All right, everybody. Talk to you. That wasn't very nice, Mary Lou, what you just said. See, Emily Flotilla said, oh, I uh, I love you, uh, Mary Lou. And, you, and then John Boy tried to say, well, how come you don't love me? And you said, because she likes me. Well, well that's, that's true, true, isn't it? That made me feel really bad, Mary Lou. You bastard. How can I be a bastard? That's a good point, Mary Lou. How can you be one? <laughs> it's a very good point. All right. Well, anyways, uh, <laughs> we'll see you guys tomorrow. And be safe out there. Good night, everybody. Cheers.